Hello, this is out of the blue comes Francis Zhu. I'm Francis, and welcome to my show. Welcome, everyone. Today I have my dear friends Jason Warwick and Kirsten Buxton with me. Hi, Jason. Hi, Kirsten. Hi. Hi, Francis. <laughs> Hi, Jason. Hi, Kirsten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so joyful to to be with you guys. Actually,、um, yeah, just a little background. Jason and Kirsten have been on this awakening journey. Um, through across the miracles, since the early two thousands, so you guys have been on this journey for over fifteen years. Just very、uh, single, focused、um, path, as guided by Jesus, and use across miracles as the teaching, the foundation, and also、um, you guys. Are the first members of the Living Miracles community. So, living in community and using the context of community as the backdrop for awakening for mind training、uh, seem to be your pathway. Community has been a big symbol in in your experience. So I just feel yeah feel really excited. And honored to be here and、um, to have this discussion, to share、um, what this awakening journey is like for the past、um, almost two decades. <laughs> <laughs> and also, right now, I think Jason, you went to Mallorca, Spain. In January two thousand twenty, right before the pandemic, you went there. You didn't really have any plan, and now everything worked out that you're based there now. And Kirsten, you were guided to Living Miracles Monastery in Utah, in the United States, and now you're based there. So it's quite a quite an orchestration how this all happened. Do you guys see this as a huge gift right now? Yeah, definitely, definitely.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just the way you described it there is like we landed in these places, and and that's what it feels like. It was unplanned. Like it was, it was not. Yeah, it was a surprise. Like it always is, I feel like on on this journey, it's always a surprise. Like I would say, from the beginning, we haven't planned it in in form or known what it's going to look like, you know, ever really. It's just this, and that's part of the depth I think of being joined with David as part of our our mission or our path. Is it's about. Our awakening and going deeper, and and only Jesus knows, you know, only the Spirit knows, like what's going to be most helpful for us to keep undoing the ego and going into the unknown, and and undoing or expanding, which is、mm-hmm. the same thing,、mm-hmm. <laughs> really in different ways. But yeah, for sure, I I I wouldn't have known that I would. Be coming here to the monastery at this time. <laughs> yeah.、Even、what about you, you, Jason? What about me?、Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to say, in some weird kind of a way, I feel like I caused the pandemic <laughs> 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 because. Only Jesus knew what it would take for me to go inwards. <laughs> <laughs> I had this like almost insatiable drive for like adventure that went from like 
really external adventures before the community to mm. lots of people and joining with people and even one-on-ones and you know even though I was moving away from gatherings it's people and I didn't realize how much of a people how much of, of a people addiction I had that somehow the pandemic was a symbol of when I came over here to Spain and kind of saw that I, I don't know what word to use except what's in my mind, like stripped of leadership roles from the community and tried to fulfill that void with people in some way. And yet I was heavily supported and guided to to be by myself and although I did undertake a relationship again with Emily I um, still felt pretty much on my own all my projects were on my own everything that had been collaborative was on my own all decisions were on my own all the risk taking was on my own but uh, yeah, it was very helpful, actually. I would never, ever, ever, ever have consciously chosen that or even wished that upon myself, but it, you know, consciously, but it like forced me to find my feelings, which actually I'd been avoiding through all the people. <laughs> like even the so called, I don't know gift is the right word but passion maybe or something i read i had witnesses saying i had a gift of one-on-ones but i would just love one-on-ones but there was always this thing where okay if they were okay then i was okay and i didn't realize how much i was trying to fix within those ones as a way Mm. to avoid my own emotions Mm. and i guess in some sense they are my own i've been starting to see that even what seems to be others are still my own but i had like david used to say that you need to let the lighthouse that swings around swing back fully to you. And I never really knew what that meant because I hadn't, I don't know, fully, or I'm even going to say begun because I just want to be wanted and want to be so humble about not really know where I'm, in, where I'm at. Mm-hmm. That I had to like, I don't know, pretend or but just act as if I had never started. So every little thought and emotion, I just wanted to, let up but I didn't want to get stuck in it I also wanted to learn like which ones need to be released which ones are distractions um, what are feelings of the Holy Spirit that are actually guidance because I felt like the words were cut up Um, like I used to think that I was guided by words by Jesus but Mm. somehow before I came here that got pulled and I, I could definitely say that I did not hear the voice for God at all and if i did i didn't trust it so it mm-hmm. didn't matter if i'd hear those words but and i don't know what to say about that you're welcome to comment but i i just felt like it was an invitation to get in touch with like a new way of being in touch with the voice for god through feelings and mm-hmm. and 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 my mighty companions even more so and oh they're mm-hmm. saying this okay even if i don't feel it i'm going to experiment with that like mm-hmm really just give everything a new shot because I wasn't happy. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, It it is interesting to hear because I know when I first met you guys, I met you guys in 2009 in Australia and you were there to start um, a community in Australia. And there were many, many different missions throughout the years we started a community also in hawaii and um later on in spain not this permanent one right now but we had a couple of temporary temporary um centers or communities in spain starting 2013 and 
Jason, you started um, very early on. I think soon, very soon after joining the community, you were given a leadership role. You were given to practice, to hear the voice for God and speak it. And I do see that you were a very clear channel um, when you were given that role and you took on so fully and everybody benefited from that. And then, then when that phase is done, like you described now that now you're, you're going into this phase where the spirit is saying, if there is any kind of desire to fix the world, we're even trying to get anything from relationships with people, knowing that you're, you know, you feel comfort or you feel secure knowing you can help other people, this helper role. I know you, you told me over and over throughout the years, you had this huge helper um, concept, so to speak, that you really wanted to help. And it's just something that you feel really good about. But I see that then the spirit is like, okay, let's put, let's step out of that for, for, for a little bit and, and just allow, even if that is used by the ego to cover any um, unworthiness, inadequacy that, that's buried by this helper role, it's, it's time to come up and and I see that you're you are attracted to Spain. It is a through attraction still, even with you know step out of from some kind of familiar role. It was hugely attractive to you to have this relationship with Emily again, and to be very held and to also offer what you can offer is wisdom. Um, maybe not so much through words because you are letting others be fulfilling their parts. So I just, do you, do you agree that every single step is still through attraction? Even this step of letting go of something that we feel very comfortable with. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> going through it i can't say <laughs> it was through attraction that's for sure it was more through trust <laughs> but if i'm honest eventually i got in touch with it i did i mean coming to spain was through attraction yes that's for sure but like this the spiri website or or the being alone or the aspects that kind of seem mm. to come along with it no that <laughs> <laughs> But I think part of that, to be even more honest, was I did not know what I was attracted to. Mm. So, and that's what I've been trying to discover. So I, I guess I have to say, yes, I can't believe I was attracted to this quiet and to Spiri and working by myself. And because I've seen how much, how helpful it is. And you said something to me years ago when I had a push away to my relationship. You saw that I was actually. I didn't want to let it go and I was attracted. You saw something there. And so I've kind of paid attention to that. And I think that's similar with actually everything is that everything I'm doing, I must want it somewhere. And if I can just begin to acknowledge that, you know, it's for me as opposed to being done to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's also what I've been trying to get more in touch with is that kind of letting go of the, the victim that that kind of i don't know if it crept in or was always there i don't know how to look at that stuff right now but you know with, with getting into community being comfortable it's like a victim came in like like you owe me you know maybe even you specifically or david or actually everybody <laughs> Everybody owed me something for everything that I've done. Like, don't you know what I've done? Mm. And that yet, you know, it's not spiritual to think that way. So I'd repress that so quickly. And 
think I was over mm. it by my repression, but mm. no, I, I had to learn mm -hmm. what repression was. <laughs> like, oh, that's what repression is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's beautiful because there is, you know, when a ego is there and there, there is this, uh, even we did something right, then the ego wanted to be acknowledged and, you know, be credited to. This is what I have done for this community, you know, everybody better acknowledge that. But, but actually, you know, one thing I did read yesterday's lesson, I don't know whether you guys follow the, the calendar lesson, but yesterday's lesson, the first sentence of the lesson is that it's lesson 96, salvation comes from my oneself. And the first sentence is that although you are oneself, you experience yourself as two, as both good and evil, loving and hating, mind and body. When I read that, I was like, wow, Jesus associated good, loving with mind, evil, hating with body. There is no other separation, it's only two mind or body so everything like he says in the course over and over again body is a symbol of fear body is a symbol of the separation body is the symbol of the guilt and yet all this world is is to try to make the body a little better like make still at the level of the body you know let's make the body even on this awakening journey eventually at the at, at beginning i know for myself i wanted to be a better um somebody more loving more good body you know more awakened self and that's the wrong direction like there is absolutely mm. no mm there is absolutely mm. no way out there. Mm. But when, when we see that everything to do with, with the body, like having the mind serve the body, think for the body, they're all wrong direction. Mm. And the only way out is to have the body serves the mind, to serve the spirit. So I think that is one thing, you know, for me, I really feel this whole journey, I can just summarize it as learning to give as simple as that, because when, when I use the mind to think for the body, for myself, it's all about me, me, mm -hmm. me. And even in the intangible realm, am I doing the right thing? I want to be right. I want to be getting the spirit guidance right you know I, I i want to make no mistakes i want to yeah i want to be good i want to be seen as good it's, it's still me 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 mm -hmm. and the true expansion in mind only happens when when i will allow the spirit to use the body to gradually see that anything to do with the body credit approval getting anything right or wrong is just oh okay it's all to be let go of mm -hmm. but but yeah i hear what you're saying about even doing something have done something right have been part of setting the community mm -hmm. up then there is this everybody better know <laughs> but it's 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 very humbling would you say to this awakening journey is we anything we think we have done right has to be let go of as well i i'm i'm blown away by that actually like i david even said something years and years ago I thought it was to the car, but right now I th maybe it was directly to me. <laughs> he turned around and he said, he talked about another lady and said, yeah, she just admitted she didn't know what enlightenment was. 
And that always stuck with me. But it's like just this last year, I started to see that, wow, that is such a trap to think, to go for enlightenment. Because then if you're going for it, you think you know what it is. Then it's in the future. It's terrible. You're not there now. And it's like, just to apply that. And that's why I've, I've loved this turtle metaphor. Like to me, you know, you guys did that at the end of the kingdom. You talk about, we can all be turtles for God. And that, you know, maybe could still imply some kind of a timeline, but all I have to say is practically and experientially, when I think of this as a lifelong journey and I don't know what enlightenment is and I can just practice being natural and letting up whatever's irritating me, I feel way better. <laughs> it's like I can start or something. So, yeah. It's like letting go of future goal to gain present peace. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So Kirsten, how, how would you summarize this, this awakening journey? You have been, you came to, um, to join with David in 20, 2004. You just shared that it was not what you thought. Um, so <laughs> do you have a way to summarize it for us? <laughs> Let's start with a small question. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Uh, I just I, I just really appreciated hearing Jason just share that and I just feel yeah just the depth of gratitude <laughs> for yeah this whole journey and I didn't I yeah to summarize it it's just it's such a walk of trust. It's such a deep walk of trust because we're constantly letting go of the past, like you were describing. Like when there's any little holding on to me and and what I did or this identity of, of myself, then that's that's the self-concept that ends up being stuck and and so there's much of what Jason was sharing that in maybe different ways, but very subtle, it's the same. It's There's been such a wash and a let go. Because I remember hearing myself talking about the past, like I was the first, you know, I was the first to show up. I was, there was no community. It was just David and two cats and I came. And so that's how it started. But if I would hold on to even that as if it means something, you know, like Jason and I, we were the stability, you know, we provided it and we built mystical mind training program. And, you know, and I, it's like every step of the way, it's, it's like, we have to say yes to taking on what the spirit's giving us to do. And we did, like we gave our hearts 100% to everything that was given us. And we trusted in David, 100 percent and and that was the stability but as soon as the you know the self is in there with me and i did it that's the block and so even i would say these last years you know it, it's ever more deeper letting go that i did anything that of myself i am you know i did any of it that like i and yeah, and I think that's that's where it gets more mystical, mm. like because it's a wash. It's such a wash into yeah. What if I really didn't do any of it? Like I, I just kept saying yes, and then the spirit was showing me, and the spirit was doing it through me, and mm. and and then that's what keeps freeing my mind into mm. being in that state now and that's what I'm so grateful for now like I I'm here at the monastery and I'm overseeing it and it feels like I've never been in leadership before if that makes mm. sense mm -hmm. because because 
I am here in a whole different state of mind to what I would have been before. Like I personally would, had so much responsibility because I believed I was doing it. And I was doing it for a reason. There was also a lot of ideas about the mission and, and what it's for and, mm. and, you know, and, and here I am, like Jason's there in Spain in some ways. He's not on his own. Of course not. He's in, he's in a relationship and surrounded by community. But mm. it's a phase of, of being, you know, on your own with spirit. And in a way, I feel the same. Like, I don't have other community members here. I don't have, you know, the mighty companions that were given me in the lifelong commitments you know, like those relationships, I, we were always in collaboration with whatever we were doing when we were on missions of setting up centers or, you know, going on travels. But in a way, I feel like I'm here on my own. Mm. And so it's, this, it's, it's up to me. Mm. And yet I could never have done this before because of that other element that was there before, you know, that I was personally doing it. Yeah. And and so it feels, yeah, like a whole new phase that that's here now. That's beautiful. That's really beautiful. I I just um, was thinking as you were talking this recent trip that we we did here in Mexico. You know, um, the guidance through David came in because we were waiting for to see when this trip would happen we would drive uh into this other town and make a, a one-day mission and then when the time came david the guidance just came through him so clearly and directly you go this this one go this one go this one go and this one go on this day and and nobody knew who would be the first one to go. And nobody also knew exactly which day it was going to happen. So when that happened, that day happened to be the day JP was called to go. And it was it happened to be the day where we are launching this MWGE site, the new site. And this is the day that JP and his team member, Nicholas, two of them had been planned for a long time for that day to launch the MWGE site because they were required. They were given a specific window. They have to do their work, make sure this site will go live um, without a glitch. And also there was a real deadline for the, you know, rarely for us, like a real deadline, we can't move because all the members of that MWGE site uh, were informed of that launching time. And he was called to go on this trip. So he would miss that mission, uh, that particular um, task. And he was like, I'm, I can't leave Nicholas behind to do this. I, I didn't even know how to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't even know how to, we have to work on it together. And yet it was a walk of trust because I just said, yeah, we can't, we can't be split. We have to totally trust this, this trip. We're going there fully without thinking about this other task, even though that was so important, we got to just have to trust. And he went, Nicholas was alone, <laughs> left alone, <laughs> unexpectedly the day before he realized he was going to be alone handling this massive, massive task on his own. And he was given this chance to just hold the spirit's hand. And there was a four hour window with so many decisions to make. And he made every single decision right. There was not a one glitch. There was not one thing that went even a little bit um, wrong. It was complete flow and miracle for him to see that the spirit was with him right there when he called on the spirit. It was such an amazing experience. And I was so touched when I heard it as we were driving back in the dark 
to know this is how it all went. And, and Nicholas was so excited to share his miracles the next day. And I just realized when, when we follow the guidance, everybody benefits. Even though sometimes we feel, okay, we're leaving someone behind or someone might think, I, I don't know how to do this on our own, but it's such a walk of trust. Yeah. Yeah. And I see that is also what you're describing, Chris, and that you are, you know, we used to do a lot of the mission in pairs or in groups, you know, facilitate retreats, set up centers, set up nonprofits. And then suddenly when, when you're in a monastery, setting up this mystical community on your own, it does feel brand new because, um, yeah, you were given a mission to just be with the spirit. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it is. And and all I knew initially, I just I was in prayer with Jesus, and and I could just see it. It's like I'm to go to the monastery, and it just felt like light. And it was for the winter. That's how it started off. That's how he usually starts off. Start off with a small <laughs> commitment, and then it expands. And and so here I was coming here in the winter, just trusting that then others would show up, that he would bring in who else was to come, because the volume of logistics. <laughs> you know, the volume of logistics overseeing a property like this is off the scale. You know, it, this is not an apartment in the city. <laughs> you know, this is—I mean, you guys know the monastery, and anyone who's been here before, it's like I counted once how many, uh, like how many toilets there are, how many doors there are <laughs> on this property, <laughs> how many buildings there are on this property. It's unique. No, it's just so unique. And then when you throw in, you know, snow and vehicles and um, just even going on a shopping run from here, nothing is a little a little detail. You don't just pop off to the shop. We're talking a five-hour return trip anytime you're going to go somewhere because it's remote. And so just – and and I've never been in a – I've never been involved, like, with maintenance before in this way like it was and so just to find myself like learning all about everything on the property because this is my mission so there was something with the septic system and so i'm in 100 percent. like my prayer is there my care is there my heart is there and and i can't tell you how inspiring it has been to join with the team and go through this whole mission for months with the septic system here to get down to the bottom of it you know to resolve what was there you know and facing facing all of whatever thoughts that would bring up you know in terms of that being a project that could be more or less inspiring than putting in a new oven in the kitchen and redesigning a cabinet and yet that's but I can't tell you how inspiring it is, like, because it's about just saying yes, one hundred percent, and and then feeling the fullness of being joined in collaboration and and having to rely so totally on prayer and being told what to do because there's no past learning. <laughs> you know, I don't know anything about these things in advance. So, yeah. Yeah. I also noticed that this awakening journey is nothing that I thought what awakening journey would look like because in this particular, mm. um, I would say, mm. the form that it took from, from me, and I guess it's the same for you guys, there were so many logistics and projects involved, so many, never stop, and yet you know, you can go through the projects with the kind of state of mind that is peaceful, that is prayerful, that hears only one voice, or you can go through with anything, 
end result, control, planning. And I, I also noticed, you know, the goal of going through those projects Definitely, we already know it's not for the outcome of the projects because it never goes well when when you put the result. Uh, it just adds stress and frustration. But even if the projects, it is not even for getting it right spiritually to avoid any ego uh, patterns to rise up because I, I see that also could be a ego trap, like I want to do it so right. I want to make sure um, I don't make any mistakes. I want to make sure there is no ego involved in this project. And it's impossible. It's impossible because the projects will keep rolling in until you just feel like I'm just going to have to, I'm just going to have to approach this project as how it is and allow, just truly allow, and the ego patterns would come up, the, the planning, the control, the fear of the consequence, see things as falling apart would rise up to be seen, to not be hidden. And yet, in that, somehow miracles were also given and also seen to, to gain trust, to see, wow, you can truly let go, because it never... It never happens the way you foresee it to happen, no matter how much you plan. Anyways, I don't know whether you guys have similar experience or any insights around that. Well, I, I had like three different scenarios run through my mind when you were talking, but the one that stands out actually is... Hmm. Well, actually, yeah, the first thing is just yesterday I had this feeling like there was something that I wanted to speak to somebody in the community. And I I felt that it, it was egoic, but and I didn't know my lesson. And so I was holding back, but I joined someone else in the community. And they said, oh, no, no, just what you said. You have to give yourself permission to speak it and let the lesson be revealed. You know, don't hold back on the communication for trying to get it right but but in a more real way for me was this seo i don't know if you know but i felt i i feel like it was the spirit just saying take on more seo because whenever i would do it i would kind of i had this with mmt years ago but i put my hand on the mouse and i would kind of go into this mystical experience for like 10 minutes and you know, I, I don't know what light is, but it's what I would call like a light episode. I don't even know what light is, so it's hard to talk about it, but I would feel so light. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and I would feel so good. I'm like, okay, this is a good direction. But then right as I would move into it, I would see how much I did not know about SEO. And not only that, in order just to do the basics, I had to read over all these documents like that Nicholas had put together over the years and Utah and JP and mel and michael and they put together these like how to i don't know like how to write words living miracles style guideline and and an seo document and how to work with passwords and i was like blown away by the love and care that had been put into all of this that i had just dismissed as like i'm ashamed to say but either beneath me i didn't need to do that or or even worse i didn't even know that they had done it. And it was just like these treasure troves of things were showing up. And then I didn't know I was gonna go into that, but, but then what happened is as I went into SEO, what you were saying kept coming to me is I wanted to do it good and right, or I wouldn't do it. Like the same care that I saw these guys putting into these documents. But the more I went into SEO, it was impossible. Just to SEO one website could be one person's full-time job. And we have 50 websites and I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to work Google Analytics. I don't understand these things. And it was just like any chance of doing a good job was out the <laughs> completely out the window. And so I had to like, do I still feel to move forward? Yes. And what happened was, is I, yeah, I, I mean, it's still moving through, but I, I just have this sense of failure that kept coming up. Like no matter what I did, I could never do it good enough. 
and I had no one to judge it except myself. And I thought I was doing terrible. So it was like failure every day. You know, I keep hearing this thought, you're a loser, you're a loser. It was so, it's like I would hear myself blurting it out in the shower. You're a loser. And I'm like, oh, thank God nobody's around right now. <laughs> but now I'm telling the whole world through this podcast it's what's worth. <laughs> But there's like so much shame around even having those thoughts because it conflicted with the spiritual self-concept. So I'm like, okay, good, no one's around me. Oh, but I'm supposed to be open about my thoughts. Oh, you failed there too. It was like I couldn't get out of <laughs> failure, loser, loser, loser. I can I can't get it right. So I just had to slowly start with myself, like opening up to myself and admitting it's there. And that's where the relationship came in. I feel with Emily was I started to dare to say some of these things or or even harder say my feelings knowing how much I thought about myself and take a risk with my feelings and seeing seeing how it went so it was like a baby with you know learning a new language learning English or whatever language they learn <laughs> I felt like a baby with communications and, and sort of still do actually Well, when uh, in the first episode, when I was talking with David about the community, he really just sees that the community is in in the mind as a symbol, and yet everybody who joined in the community is basically going through this massive opening up or willingness um, of communication. That's that's the way that he sees it. And I really resonate with that as well, because if one thing I can look back and think about this past, however many years in the community, wow, the training around communication, you know, is massive. Mm -hmm. Communicating about everything and mm -hmm. in essence, not hiding anything, not holding anything back, not avoiding direct communication is something, you know, direct communication is so fearful to the ego because direct communication or communion mm. with God is what the ego mm. is afraid of. So even symbolically direct communication with each other was so fearful to, uh, to the one you know, that at least I know it was very fearful to me in the past. If someone called me on Skype without telling me first, I would be like <laughs> in shock and trying to like avoid any direct call and direct communication. But I just see that all these projects that we were called into is nothing but a massive opportunity and training ground for direct communications. And of course, you know, together with that, all these projection attempts to project mm. and unworthiness, yeah, it is all been flushed up and seen yeah. as well. Yeah, like, okay, communicate uh, and no private thoughts and have it be authentic. And it's like, but don't hold back. But, you know, there's a line in the course I just read recently from a workbook lesson, today practice saying no thoughts from the ego at all you know and it was so beneficial to me I was telling you guys about it already it's like it's so profound it's like it's it's freed up my mind to be more available and more clear and re wow I really and those thoughts just disappeared something that you know no private thoughts that even the ego can get a hold of that and like yeah I probably just opened that up because I it's I, I feel you <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Because there's the point where it's like, what does it even mean? No, pr like private thoughts. Because really, it's that you just wouldn't keep thoughts hidden. But the only ones that you can share are, are thoughts from the spirit. So that's then what I end up seeing here, and that's what everyone has to join in like we have to join in collaboration in mind which means we have to bring forth what we're feeling and thinking because that's how we find the guidance together you know, of of 
what we're to do and how how it's to go so yeah that's what yeah that's what i see yeah this is is like daring to trust that whatever is there it, it's valuable I, and it's essential and it has to be spoken i think that's some of the nuances that mm. Yeah. that I've been seeing is yeah, like yeah, just yeah. just don't hold back don't mm. hold back don't hold back, don't hold anything back and and yet also like don't don't but also pull back and have the space so that when I am then you know with others then there's a not holding back aspect or function that I have I have to be a full communication channel but then it's being, and then I have to step back. You know, it's very, very important not to overend or because then I'm, I'm, I'm not allowing everyone else to then be fully in their function. You know, like they, they need the space of not having me around <laughs> to, <laughs> to be able to go forward in the exact same way you know, with full communication and prayer and joining and, yeah and flying with what it is that that they're to do so yeah yeah i really see that this communication is so different than what uh what i thought you know i think when i first actually when i first met you jason you came to my course group and that's what i felt so attracted to was when you said that in the community you practice no private thoughts and no people pleasing and i thought that was such a high bar to be able to have no private thoughts and no people pleasing to my in my mind means you're free you're free you're not you're not living with guilt anymore so i was like i'm in i need to live like this and now, you know, after many years of practicing you no know, private thoughts, of course, at the beginning, what came out majority, in majority were ego thoughts, attack thoughts that uh, I felt shameful of, felt shameful to think this way, felt shameful to be triggered by tiny little things. Why am I triggered by these little things? You know, it's so f shameful to, to admit, but but that was um, undone through basically not willing to hide anything. And I do see that those ego thoughts start to fade when we choose not to hide it. It just fades because they don't have any power to gain momentum in the mind the moment we feel we're not hiding. We don't want to hold it to ourselves to make it a real story that we harbor in the mind. Then it, it started to fade. Then I feel like it just naturally gave room to the spirit thoughts to come in. We don't even have to act, actively do work to develop the spirit thoughts. It's, mm. it's, it comes in naturally mm. when you have no attraction to hide any, any thoughts. It's just it's very mm. natural. That's beautiful. I I know we talked before this show last week about a possible theme of equality. And I, I have that in my mind even right now because, because I was just asking myself as you were talking, like, do I, do I authentically want to not hide? Because if I can receive that lesson now that it's time to give some space to not sharing certain thoughts because I don't really believe in them and it's time for them to let them go. You know, I don't want to get arrogant then and just start hiding because immediately I start thinking like, well, I'm better than somebody else or something like that. Like I can feel somehow that creeps in and yeah, it's, it's just such a focus for me right now is like equality, equality, like really learning what that truly is because I think with the leadership I couldn't separate out somebody being less than 
in the leadership, like not really knowing how to use it completely for myself, like using, say, a follower to see how it was for me. So the messages that would come through, I would really think it was for the other person. <laughs> and, <laughs> and somehow along the journey, forgot that it was for me. So yeah, I just, I guess I don't really know where I'm going, but that topic just came to my mind. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I love it because I, I think you, I know you both have been um, doing a lot of counseling calls over the years, but not even counseling calls, but counseling everybody that, that, you know, reach out to you guys. So I had this experience so many times that if I step back from thinking I know how to help or what their issues are, then it became truly helpful. And sometimes, you know, even, yeah, I also had very direct witnesses where when people seem to go through darkness and I couldn't help with words, like nothing I say could really change anything. Then I just go to my mind and pray and thinking, but they did nothing wrong. They were so innocent. Then I thought, can I remember it for them? Mm -hmm. If they can't see it, mm -hmm. no matter what I say, can mm -hmm. I remember it for them? Mm -hmm. And I thought, yeah, I can remember it for them. Boom, instantaneously, mm -hmm. they're healed. Mm -hmm. They remembered it too. And there were so many times like that. That makes me feel any, wow, I'm not really helping anybody because I still think there is a body out there and those experiences shows me something completely of a different realm. Mm. That's beautiful. Yeah, thanks for reminding me of that. I remember. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you also must have those kind of experiences where you think you think you're given a function for someone else. And yet in the end is, <laughs> yeah, it's not at all. That's where I feel like true equality is learned. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, I see that just even yesterday, we, we had a huge trip here um, to the local town and it involved I think about six stops at various places to pick up um, lumber and pipe and um, a door and and the last stop was the groceries and and as the groceries were being loaded into the back of the car then I could suddenly just feel this panic in the mind and um, and one of the girls who was doing the groceries I just heard her say you guys you guys put the rest in, I'm going to get in the car, it's cold, it's windy. And I came around and I said, whoa, hold up, we've had the most beautiful day, like we had so many miracles. <laughs> and I said, let's not throw it under the bus now, <laughs> you know, we're almost home. <laughs> this is So just pause, pray, let's join. So we paused and they're like, okay, good. And then we got in the car, about to go, I was like, no, hold up, what happened? And we just took the time and... Um, and it was me, she said, okay, you want me to be really honest? Don't you, Kirsten? I said, of course. She said, I panicked when I saw how much the grocery bill was because I'd underestimated and I'd said $50 and it was over $100. And she said, and then I just felt so much guilt. And, and so then it was like she couldn't even touch the groceries to put them in the back of the car. So she was saying to the guys, you put them in the car. <laughs> so like and so I was like oh wow it's like you had the knife with the blood on it almost and you're saying yeah you touch them you touch the groceries I can't touch them and then we burst into laughter and and then Walter who was helping me that he's like yeah I was the accomplice and I didn't even know what I'd done wrong but I felt so guilty trying to get the groceries in the back of the car as quick as possible <laughs> so we're all just just laughing and laughing about this what just happened as it all popped and I can see for myself I like the gift for me is I can feel the call for love I can feel when guilt's up in the mind and it's for me to speak and and answer that call for love and 
And I can see that in the past, I let so much slide. I would just let it slide, let it slide, let it slide, or even see, oh, that's someone else's healing. They're going through darkness. You know, that's just what it is. And, and, and now it's like in that sense of equality, it's like, no, this is from me. Like, I want us to feel connected. I want us to stay in the miracle. I want to feel the love with everyone. And then as soon as I can feel that it's something got broken, you know, or some help's needed, then it's just daring to speak up. And yeah. And then it's like the healing comes out and, and yeah, it just always results in a miracle. <laughs> but Yeah. And I just, I was reminded of that when you were speaking about that, Jason, with like the leader follower or like if you're judging that it's even for someone else in some way, it's for someone else's healing, there could even be the subtle resentment of I'm the one who always has to help, you know. Yeah. And, and then there was like an effort that would creep in with that, whereas it feels so different when it's, it's effortless. It's for love. It's for connection. It's for just, I don't know what's going on. That's the joy. Like, I don't know the problem and I don't know the answer. All I know is in this moment, I have to speak up and call mm. for joining. Okay. Yeah. It's like what J David always says that over the years, Jesus always says to his, in his mind, it's your lesson, it's your lesson, it's your lesson. No matter what you perceive, outside of you is still for you it's still for you and i i really also feel that like it's always a lesson to 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 directly uh you know speak it's not someone else's lesson to speak up <laughs> it's my lesson <laughs> if i see something it's my lesson not, not to hold back it's my lesson not to hold private thoughts it's not you know it's always a lesson in in the end pointing back to mind that there is only one mind giving and receive, uh, giving and receiving are the same. Even this morning, I just thought of one, one example, which actually just, it was before I came to the community, I was wrapping up my life and I had to sell my car before I came. And there's two friends who were not living in community, but who were connected to the community and they needed a car. So they, 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 they wanted to buy the car of me, but the price they can afford was lower than what I wanted, uh, what I thought that the car would worth would be worth. So I basically said, no, um, I would not people please. And I would just, uh, <laughs> I would sell it through a dealer and get the, the amount. I didn't really get much more money uh, anyways, but then what happened was years later, I was called to go back to Australia to to do a mission where there a stretch of time I had to be there to do long retreats and also travel across states. So I needed a car and these friends, the same friends who offered me their car to drive and it was a stick shift. I couldn't drive stick shift. And I was beating myself up for why didn't I sell my car to them so that I would be given back my own car to drive <laughs> cross days, brand new and such an easy car that I know everything about. I was like, wow, even in the physical realm, giving and receive <laughs> are the same. I was like having a direct experience, like, if, you know, to learn generosity. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it that's that's beautiful francis and that's what i that, that's the joy i remember i used to get so frustrated with other people not communicating and i'd feel like how can i train everyone to communicate how can i get them to communicate with me so that i don't have to keep like efforting to go in the direction of others you know because i need to know i need to i need the feedback i need the follow up i need to know did that get completed you know and uh so that's been a big part of the wash i feel of of really 
washing away expectations around communication and 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 it's like an inner listening into like what is my inspiration truly is it my spark to go in a direction of asking for communication mm. and seeing no that, like I could feel it when that's not it versus when is it truly that I'm sparked by communication and then I go towards and it is a feeling of generosity that I'm giving mm. and then I receive the communication and the, and the holy encounter you know, in which questions get answered but it's not even about that it's about the joy of feeling the love of the full communication yeah. when it's given you know, when, yeah, it's, yeah. when it's given and it's letting go. I think there was just threads of of responsibility or guilt still around some idea of that I need to know everything that's happening. So I need people to feedback to me and give me the full picture so that I can relax and trust, you know, that everything's good, everything's on track. You know, there's no gaps anywhere. But the difference between that approach for want of a better word, you know, and and being in the state of truly I need to nothing, all is well, you know, am I inspired? You know, do I feel prompted? Am I being moved? You know, then mm -hmm. that it's just night and day, you know, it's spirit or mm -hmm. ego. And 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 that's washing away, that's just so many nuances in my mind of, of self-concept you know, versus spirit truly being in charge. Mm. And all the rules, like you were just sharing that about <clears throat> even with your car, with money, like there's so much around that mm -hmm. of, I feel so much of our training, even, you know, the three of us around stewardship of money on behalf of the Holy Spirit because we gave our everything to this, you know, to like everything personal that we had, our life, which means everything in form as well, over to say here, be you in charge, you know, and then to become a steward for the spirit, including the money. It's no longer my personal money, it's the Holy Spirit's. And, and so wanting to be a good steward, having guilt, you know, around misspending or spending it all and and having to learn those lessons of yeah truly letting it be spirits and so it's not about a dollar you know it's not about being tight with the money or loose with the money it's about like really letting it be mm -hmm. us being told what is the best use of the resources so yeah. that they can serve the plan you know, really serve the plan, which we're not in charge of. We we don't have the bigger picture, so we we're so reliant reliant on letting go of past learning to keep being shown what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. With money, it's just also very charged area because money is so much to do with taking care of this body taking care of bodies you know it's it it's like a direct relation with being sustained in this world with money and it just feels really charged an area and, and like you said i i do know that there is no uh form guidelines that we're relying on but we have it this is also the same as an area in mind to listen to the spirit with very practical decisions, how to spend money, what to spend money on, because it's not to be used to benefit anybody or any group of bodies. Mm -hmm. It is actually used to benefit the mind as spirit like sees, mm -hmm. as spirit guides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also used for direct communication. I see sometimes with money issues, it, it is um, also somehow related to whether it, it's, it's to cover up some kind of guilt or that avoiding direct communications. Mm -hmm. 
So it's all connected. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, maybe one thing I could bring up is that like when you were talking, Kirsten, you said um, threads. But my experience is not, it's not like threads. They're like giant ropes. And I'm attracted to the idea of them being th threads. <laughs> they feel like these, yeah. Just, you mean money? As well, I can't, I don't, not necessarily money. I mean, I think I resonate with everything you're saying and probably could even bring up some specifics maybe for a different call, but I'm thinking more like when she was saying like letting go of uh, threads of responsibility, for example, or threads of communication or holding back. <laughs> You're laughing. <laughs> but to me, that's like everything is being revealed right now is like, I've never seen them before and they're giant ropes. How am I ever going to, let this go and there's this temptation to I don't know if it's temptation is the right word but it's experiential it's like I've never started this before I've never looked at this before I've never but I noticed on these calls with you guys you know you're very quick afterwards to be like well actually remember this da 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 and I think that's helpful to just not like somehow let the ego get it but there's an underlying question that I'm yeah, I'm still in uh, in process with, which is like, how do you approach awakening at all, like with the beginner's mind and you don't know anything, which is actually more what's happening to me on a grander scale and seeing how much I do think I know with certain things. Like, how can I take anything from the past that was helpful and healing? And so isn't it always good to think everything is like a big rope that I got to let go of? Yeah, so there's some. <laughs> yeah, it is a beginner's mind, you know, um, like very unexpectedly, the longer you're on this journey, you don't feel clear. You don't feel clearer. <laughs> you actually feel, wow, I don't know anything even what i thought i knew how arrogant was i right. to even think right. i knew right when then someone talks to you though like you've been on the journey for a while and i'm like oh stop it this <laughs> sounds terrible no <laughs> <laughs> like there's still a shame because it's like i don't even know what that means but like, i don't want to be identified with that that's yeah for sure but i think it's the identification because i know being, you know, around David so much, I just see, wow, uh, such a clear, of course, the joy and, but the clear channel that he is, the, 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 the guidance that comes through him was so clear and spot on, just spot on. And, and I, I had this desire to be just like that, you know, and then looking at I just felt like I couldn't be that accurate in my intuition <laughs> or in the spirit's guidance. When I look at all the decisions, I constantly feel, oh my God, am I wrong to say that? Am I wrong to decide on that? Do I know for sure? And then at some point I just thought, what's the problem? What's the problem? David is here. So why can't I just link up with him? Like why? Why do I keep constantly wanting to be right, to be the right one? As if I'm saying, I have a very clear guide and that's not enough, but I, I need to be the one, the clear mm -hmm. one to make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. And I really could see the impossibility mm -hmm. of that direction. Because I know every time I look back on the decisions I made, Every time I look back, it was always guilt involved. Doesn't matter whether it was right or wrong, actually. I, first of all, when I look back, I was already with the ego and there was no clarity to judge anyways. And I only focused on the wrong things and the wrong witnesses anyways. 
So I felt like, wow, okay, what's the problem? You know, David is here, or spirit is here. Jesus is here in my mind. There is a clear one. I, I, don't, I don't need to develop myself in such a way. I, I can just line up as long as the symbol is here. So then I trust that if I don't need the symbol, I mean, spirit is always going to be here. So it's it, even to let go of that one that wants to be good, wants to be right, wants to even get guidance right. Mm. It was like a big light go as well. Mm. It's like, it can't be right. Mm. What is right and what is wrong, really? You know, if you want to be right, then you also believe you can be wrong. And there's always guilt. Mm. But I do feel... It is relaxing. And like you said, it's just become more and more. I just don't know. And not afraid to admit that. I really don't know. Uh, I don't know. And let me ask the spirit. If I'm supposed to know, I will be told. Mm. You know, everything is. I haven't seen anything have gone wrong ever. So in that way, what can go wrong now? It must just still be this idea, you know, that something could could be retained from the past as valuable because if they're really just seen as giant ropes falling off, all there is to do is celebrate. Like, okay, the, the ropes are falling off. I don't have to find threads or something to, to keep. That's beautiful. But we, we talked about, at one point we talked to, like David had said, um, okay, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but it's like, okay. <laughs> He'd said like, <laughs> you got to pay attention to autonomous leadership and blind following. Mm -hmm. And you know, in this community, we have structure like you i heard you mm -hmm. talk about this on one of your talks i think it was eric and susan mm -hmm. hierarchical structure to be used by the spirit and so i was like what do i do with that if it's autonomous leadership and blind following what roles can i slip into and i think in some ways that's why this project that i've been given are really the only things i could have done because i can't really lead anybody and i can't really follow anybody but slowly I'm starting to get into more collaborations to practice not leading anybody and not following anybody and really just stay true to my feelings. So it's kind of a, yeah. 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 It's like an ego can slip into the leadership or the follower. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's making me think when you were saying that, that was it. I was thinking, well, I would yeah. do that then. Okay. I'll, let me be near David. So he can just tell me what to do, but that doesn't work, you know. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. It's like everybody, I, I just feel like, wow, that must mean that we are not here to to lead in the truest sense, to 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 have this I, whatever we identify with, that to be the leader, but to truly rely on the spirit so completely. And learning still is a lesson of learning to let go of this self and to 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 just say yeah it's good enough that jesus spirit or any symbol that jesus and spirit gives for me to follow that they know then i'm gonna follow truly follow to the extent that you know if i'm guided to 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 switch roles or let go of certain self-concept but I, I, I do see that the ego can comes in and yet everything can be given to the spirit and everything is equally valuable symbol for the spirit to use as well. Mm. So it, on this path, it's really, there is no higher, lower, there is no um, hierarchy of symbols because everything is carefully planned by the spirit to point to this experience that we just touched on, that everything is mind, 
everything we do is eventually point back that there is no other. It's all mind, and we are only here to heal this one mind. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, thank you, guys. I really enjoyed our talk. Thank you so much for your insights and for your very transparent sharing and also for the humility um, and all the steps that you guys have taken. So, yeah, I'm really grateful for everything you have done and also for this time that we can spend together. Thank you so much. Thank you, mm, thank you. Love you, Francis. Love you guys too. <laughs> okay. Love you too, Chase. <laughs> okay, bye for now.